Thank you, Marianne, and uh, welcome in Christ's name to uh, our worship service. And we pray the Lord's blessings be upon you as we gather this morning around His Word and His sacrament for the strengthening of our faith. Our theme for today, uh, you can also see it there on the bulletin cover, Water and uh, Thirst. You'll see that throughout our hymns and our readings for this morning. And we pray the Lord will uh, bless the messages that come our way today. If you are a guest or visitor, we welcome you in Christ's name. Great to have you here at Good Shepherd with us. And we do pray that the Lord would bless you and we invite you to uh, worship with us again. Our order of service for this morning will be the divine service setting four. Our opening hymn is 435, Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain, and we will be standing on the last verse. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. 
let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and sing joyful songs of praise. So Moses cried to the Lord, 
What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. This lesson is also on the back of your worship folder. It's from the book of Romans, chapter 5, and the verses are 1 to 8, and we will read them together. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, for one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Will you please rise for the Holy Gospel? The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Lord, Lord. Our Gospel lesson, John 4, 5 to 26, is going to be our sermon text for this morning. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. There came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. Whatever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty forever. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water, so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship Him. God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. 
This is the gospel of the Lord. We're now going to confess our faith. We'll do that in the words of the Nicene Creed. That's printed on page 206. Before we confess our faith, I would just like to point out when we sing our sermon hymn, our hymn of the day, we will be singing verses 1, 10, and 3. 1, 10, and 3. And now we confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of His Father and of all the worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, the God of not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made. Please be seated. Jesus died so we might live. Amen. The text will serve as the base of our messages from John 4, verses 5 to 26, our sermon text for this morning. Dear friends in Christ, we have all experienced being thirsty at one time or another. That dryness in the mouth and throat makes us long for a cool beverage. But there's also another thirst that is not so easily seen inside the body dehydration. Many studies show that Americans are dehydrated. 
This can lead to daytime fatigue, fuzzy thinking, migraines, back pain, breast and colon cancer have all been associated with this unperceived but very real thirst. You may not know that it's even there, even though the kidney stone I had last fall reminded me of the condition. You see, we usually recognize thirst in our mouth, but how about the water that our vital organs need? Could the same be true when it comes to the things of God and our inside, deep spirit? The Bible speaks of thirst on two levels. Thirst of body, thirst of spirit. Have you ever been or are you now thirsty like that? Are you thirsty in the way that the anonymous woman at Sikar's well was the day Jesus had the audacity to ask for a drink? Do you thirst? We have an interesting story unfolding before us here today. A stranger, a man talking to another stranger, a woman. The Jewish Jesus talking with the Samaritan woman was a social taboo. Jesus, a Jewish stranger talking to a Samaritan woman about theology just didn't happen back then, did it? But this was part of the Son of Man's mission to seek and save the lost. And that seeking and saving would culminate in his death for the sins of the whole world. The whole world, mind you. Gently, but persistently. Jesus exposes this woman to the thirst she didn't even know was down deep in a life she thought was all about her. The whole dialogue is a postmodern conversation 2,000 years ago. You see, Our Lady at the Well has a set of religious beliefs that could best be called Samara Mush. Like many today, she's interested in spiritual things, but that doesn't mean godly in any like biblical sense. She knows about religion, but nothing about real faith in God our Father. Should we then be surprised that she could manipulate her religious beliefs to accommodate five husbands and a man she's moved in with? At a well, a water fountain, or a cooler, you know exactly what's going on inside people who are religious, but without God himself. They are dehydrated in spirit. Without God, they live without hope in this world. Here's the devil's hook. He knows we have a conscience. Conscience is life's permanently installed, constantly recording CD. We know God's voice from his holy word. Now it even looks like the sciences are starting to come around. Dr. Karen Wynn at Yale's Cognition Center has found a way to demonstrate moral discrimination. Children as young as five months old are allowed to make choices to approve or disapprove of puppet behavior. Can infants tell right from wrong in how the puppets acted? According to Dr. Wynn, yes, 87% of the time. You see, when Jesus asked the lady about her husband, he's not seeking information. He was exposing her deep thirst. It's a thirst that tells us that what we may be doing and what we want to be doing, but what if it isn't what God wants? For his creation. Then we are getting mighty thirsty. The small voice logs it all. Conscious reminds that we are all accountable and responsible to someone above and outside of us. Go, call your husband and come here, is the piercing scalpel of the law. The law leaves us naked before God and His just judgment. The thirst created by our sin leaves us with a 
dehydrated spirit. But Jesus exposed the very place she hurt. The goal was to bring her to refreshing repentance. And this prophet exposed her inside out, but he didn't condemn her and he didn't destroy her. Jesus came to quench her thirst. Jesus comes to quench our thirst. Sifting through 800 years of Samara Mush, there's one shard of truth of which this lady speaks. It was about the Messiah coming. He will tell us all things. He introduces himself as the God of Jacob. I who speak to you am he. He made himself her thirst quenching business. The Lord and giver of life, the Holy Spirit created a no stop flow fountain of faith. Faith in Christ, that promised Messiah bubbling up inside of her. Faith in Christ is a soul-satisfying relationship God instills by His grace, and she would never be the same. We will never be the same. Life can't be when you know where to go when you're thirsty, and you're worn out by sin and guilt, and you're dehydrated and shriveled up like a prune. Jesus knows about your sin and your thirst. And he did something about it with two pieces of wood and three nails and a crown of thorns and a spear. And he made all things right and righteous for us in the eyes of God our Father. And he brought us to faith. God given, bubbling into God gifted worship. In baptism, it's all yours. Through water and the life-giving spirit. Your well is waiting. Do you thirst? Amen. Please rise for the prayer of the church. We pray, Father of glory, only the gift of your spirit quenches the thirst of man. Look in mercy in all the ways your church seeks to bring the fountain of living water to the world and prosper the preaching of repentance and forgiveness. O oh, Holy One, you call us to worship you in spirit and in truth. Deliver your people from drawing near to you with their lips while their hearts are far from you. Renew our faltering worship and make our praise a sacrifice acceptable to you in your son's forgiving love. Welcoming God, your son's embrace of the outcast was limitless. Break down all the barriers that would keep us from sharing your acceptance and love with others and help us to treasure and value each person as one who is precious to you through your son's sacrifice. Providing God, forgive us for all the times we grumble or are forgetful or doubtful of your promised provision and increase our faith that we might trust you more. Gentle one, your son does not quench the smoldering wick. Remember in mercy all those who struggle with fear and doubts and strengthen them through your word and promises. Healing God, no sickness, sorrow, or death is stronger than your almighty love. Into your hands, then, we commend all who have asked for our prayers. Especially remembering this morning, Johanna Kirshner, who has been released from the hospital. We ask that you would continue to heal her in body, mind, and spirit and watch over her. We also pray for Stephanie Shemp, who undergoes surgery this Tuesday. Please be with the hands of the surgeon and those that will also be assisting that they might use their God-given abilities, that this surgery would have its desired outcome, and that your guiding presence would be with Stephanie and her family. And we also pray for Robert Shoppy, a friend of Rick and Jeanette Ross after open heart surgery. May you also heal him. May this surgery have its desired effect and strengthen him in the days ahead. We also pray, Lord, that you would grant them restoration peace, and share in your unquenchable joy. 
nourishing one, you provide us not only with the goods of this world, but with food from the age to come. The holy body and blood of your Son, risen from the dead, seated at your right hand, grant that all who pay, partake of this feast today may be strengthened to set their hope fully on the grace to be revealed on the day of his coming. Bring us to the unspeakable joys that we know in your presence, Lord, as we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Our worship continues now with the preface. You'll find that on page 208. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death, that we might not die eternally. Because he has now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. salvation by a second Adam, your son Jesus Christ our Lord, and made his cross a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith and the life of lasting.
welcome in Christ's name. Uh, please be sure to see your bulletin announcements. I'm going to hit a few of the highlights here. I'll try to kind of go in order. Uh, first of all, uh, my family is gone. They uh, safely made it to Texas. Got a phone call from them last night, and they'll be back uh, next Saturday. So I'm going to try to kind of take it easy this week, even though I still have some things to do. Uh, I got the surgery coming up, still teaching my adult class, and I'll be here Wednesday night. Uh, but otherwise, I don't plan to be in the office, so if you do have an emergency, I am in town. Please call my cell phone, and I can come to the hospital or wherever you uh, need me, and also pray for warm weather. Uh, secondly, uh, next week, uh, we're supposed to have seminarian Michael Carney here to preach. Uh, I'll uh, be here doing the liturgy, so we'll, we will have our normal communion in both services. Since Michael's going to be here, we will have our door offering that would normally be the second Sunday in April. It will be uh, next week for uh, Michael since him and his family will be here. This week Lent continues. The trustees are doing the meal. Free will offering will go toward the parking lot. That will be before 7 o'clock church. And then in a couple weeks, a few things going on. We have the International House Dinner at the International House at ISU. If you can help with food or you want to participate, the sign up is uh, back on the table in the narthex. The next day on the 12th uh, is the Walk for Life. Again, if you'd like to participate in that, see me. If you'd like to sponsor my family and I will be in that, you can see me about that as well. So, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. The only announcement that I have is covered in the bulletin, and it's on the second page that says, To Our Loving Church Family. It's talking about the fundraiser that's going to be held on April 12th for Caleb Coons. Uh, some of you may know that he is the great nephew of Nancy Fuller and a cousin uh, to Shirley Potter. He is also the son of a good friend of my wife's. So if you would like to be involved, please read that and uh, check it out. Also, you can see Paula or Shirley or Nancy for tickets. Any other announcements? Seeing none, go with the Lord this week. Thank you.